There were 11 Ninja Warrior shows in 2022, and I watched all of them twice. Once for entertainment reasons, and once to notice all of the flaws. And today, I will be ranking all 11 shows. Before we begin, thank you guys, as this is the last video of the year. I really appreciate a great 2022, and I look forward to an even better 2023. Another disclaimer, spoilers for literally all of the ninja shows that have come out this year. And as always, this is just my opinion. If you disagree with it, so be it. I'd love to discuss with you guys as to why your opinion is different, just because it's a good time talking. Without further ado, let's get on to number 11. Coming in dead last is Ninja Warrior Austria Season 3. This show disappointed me a little bit because season two was actually in my top five but at the end of the day any potential room for change was just absolutely removed in this show their courses remained very minimalistic and unchanged and boring overall the competitors got worse mainly because this was filmed immediately after season two and a lot of people ended up getting injured or they were already fatigued no one really had time to improve upon their skill set for season three. They just had to go in blind. And it led to overall weaker results, despite there being a Kanzen Seha. Stage one was also super overkill, as it normally is in Europe. And it led to stages two and three kind of just being a joke. And it led straight to Joel Matley winning. And while he totally earned it, it just felt kind of weird. There was not enough going for Ninja Warrior Austria this year, and so it is dead last. Coming in at number 10 is a show that didn't do too little, it actually did too much. It's Ninja Warrior France Season 6. This show fit three rounds of competition in two hours in the messiest and most convoluted way possible. They also had a final stage where the time limit was Jean Tizanaz's winning time from Season 4, so you had to beat the old Ninja Warrior to be the new Ninja Warrior. However, when someone did that, their time became the new time limit and it robbed basically every finalist except for one of potentially being a winner. It felt very sour and again watching qualifiers, a power tower play-in and semi-finals that were ninja versus ninja all in two hours was just a headache. It, it, it was hard to focus and hard to keep up so number 10. Ninth place goes to Ninja Warrior Poland Season 5. You know, basically every common complaint that people would have about European Ninja Warrior shows Ninja Warrior Poland is all of that. The editing was slow. The competitors were not good. They also tried to fit split decision into their crammed, tiny indoor courses, and it just did not look good or work well. Their stage one was so upper body intensive, it was basically just stage three, and it led to two people clearing the course. These are not the results you want from a Ninja Warrior tournament at all. I'm convinced that Ninja Warrior Poland is not going to get a winner for a long time, not because the competitors are bad, because there are some with potential, but because production is just going to keep changing it to whatever dumb bullshit every year, and it's just going to get harder and harder for them to win. Coming up at number 8 is Ninja Israel 4. And honestly, if there was an award for most improved, it would be this show. A lot of the flaws that this show had in past seasons were bettered. They weren't eliminated, but they were better. Fluff pieces that took 15 minutes now only take about five. The courses are faster. There is a time limit on the first three obstacles of qualifiers because normally competitors would take like two minutes on it and now they have to do it in 30 to 35 seconds. However, just because it's better than the last season and honestly the best season of Ninja Israel in general, that doesn't mean it was all that great. Five minute profiles is still a problem. A stage one with a five minute and 30 second time limit is a problem. And while I was very excited to see Yuval Shemla and Yogev Malka Kanzen Seha, it just overall was a weak buildup given that stages two and three, nobody failed. They also were really heavy handed on how much screen time Yuval got, which made it very obvious that he was going all the way. Again, most improved between 2021 and 2022, but still not the greatest. I was not expecting to put Ninja Warrior UK Race for Glory at number 7, but here we are. 
this show was the one with the most potential to be top three and possibly first place of the year, and they absolutely butchered their chances. You have hour-long episodes, which is really 40 minutes with ads. You have courses that are designed for speed and racing, which is what this show was meant to be. And you've got the energy of the original hosting team of Ninja Warrior UK and overall great athletes on the Elite Ninja side. So why is it number seven? Two big things. For starters, a majority of the competitors were very slow. And when you're having people race side by side, that is not an entertaining thing to see. You take 10 races and two of them at most were entertaining. Secondly, two of the four rounds were not actual races. So it really just felt like a big piece of clickbait. Overall, Ninja Warrior UK's revival gave us a really good formula with a really, really bland execution. It wasn't bad, but I can't give it higher than this. Coming in at number six is the sixth and potentially final season of Australian Ninja Warrior. This show started off really strong. I honestly really did like their qualifiers, but as it progressed into the semifinals, it started to get a little worse. And by the time we got to the grand final, we flatlined. The course making minimal changes is a con, but at the end of the day, not the end of the world. Ninja vs. Ninja semifinals is not a bad thing, but production really tried to pit a coach and the person they were coaching against each other or two best friends against each other, and it was very clearly just for drama that did not exist. France had their Ninja vs. Ninja semifinals based off of placements in the qualifiers, and I think that that's how it should be done. And then they made Ninja vs. Ninja Stage 1 on a stupidly overkill Stage 1 course, and that's when they lost me. I can defend it up to a certain point, but they really, really just do not know how to do finals in Australia anymore. It's no wonder this season was the one that got the show canceled because this was hands down the worst season of Australian Ninja Warrior in general. The reason it's at number six is because the courses were okay leading into the grand final and also because the talent was higher and made for good races. I'm not gonna lie, semifinals, yes, production pitted people against each other. It seemed a little biased and rigged, but the races themselves were pretty intense and there were a lot where the people were finishing within a second of each other. I was entertained. I cannot believe I'm doing this, but kicking off our top five is Ninja Warrior Poland season six. You know all of the flaws I mentioned about season five of Poland? Season six got rid of most of them. They stopped trying to over convolute their whole show and their courses with split decision and everything looked cleaner. The competitors finally looked like they knew how to properly lache and the results were overall better in the qualifiers and semifinals. Stage one had no stage three obstacles on it. In season five, we had hang climb on stage one, nothing like that this season. However, I will say that they did make stage one's time limit way too lenient because while they had two people clear stage one in season five, you had 17 out of 24 people clear stage one in season six. This did lead to an intense and entertaining stage two with an ass eh stage three, but it was still a way better finale than Poland's ever had. The only downside to it, honestly, was putting Drumhopper in the semifinals just because everything was very speedy and then you had the drum hopper, which took up a lot of time. Kind of a pace killer, but minor. This was hands down the best season of Ninja Warrior Poland, and I would say it's actually watchable. Coming in at number four is the one that I'm going to get a lot of flack for. Uh, it's Sasuke 40. Oh no, how could you put Sasuke 40 not in the top three? This is my, this is blasphemy. Shut up. I've said it before in my review already. I think that the results and on paper, Sasuke 40 is amazing. However, the editing really drags it down. And so really, that's the problem with a lot of the shows above Sasuke 40. I'm taking the results and their edits into account, balancing it out. Which one had better results and how did they handle it editing wise? And Sasuke 40 had amazing results, but handled it the worst. I can absolutely cut him some slack. However, again, it would have been better had he knew he focused on certain people that actually stuck around for majority of the tournament instead of the people who were gone in stages one or two. Because by the time we got to stage three, everyone just felt gypped and I felt nothing. It's the same problem for what number two and number one are on this list, but I just think that they handled their stuff a little bit better than Sasuke. I cannot believe that I'm putting a Ninja vs. Ninja show in the top three above Sasuke, but objectively speaking, Ninja Warrior Germany All-Stars Season 2 is the best show of 2022. 
A lot of complaints that I had about season one were that the competitors were slow, they were picking really pumpy obstacles that were not meant for race courses, and it just was kind of boring overall. This season did not have that problem at all all. The races were way more intense, the obstacles were way more geared towards speed, and overall the editing kept the pace going, which is crazy because these episodes are three hours long and did not feel like it. If I were to go just off of a list and check all of the boxes off, this is the number one ninja show of 2022. So why is it number three? Quite simple. It's a Ninja vs. Ninja show. I like Ninja vs. Ninja, but I would absolutely rather take a good season of a Midoriyama show over a great season of a Ninja vs. Ninja show. However, I would absolutely recommend watching this one, and uh, not only was this the best Ninja vs. Ninja show of 2022, this is one of the two, if not the best, Ninja vs. Ninja show of all time. I was really going back between this one, the one above it, and Sasuke. Number two is Ninja Warrior Germany season seven. Ninja Warrior Germany was number one last year for me, actually. I loved season six. And in terms of renewals, Ninja Warrior Germany did a great job at changing things up without making it feel overkill. The qualifiers were the longer, pumpier courses this time, and the shorter, speedier courses were the semifinals, and it led to much more competitive results between the competitors themselves. You had a lot of people failing late into the qualifiers, which led to some nail biters in terms of leaderboard results, and that kept me more invested throughout the three hour episodes than seasons past. At the same time, the semifinals had way too many clears because the course was too easy, but at the same time, it was nice seeing that sprint for the buzzer, and I actually really enjoyed that too. The reason it is number two is because the last episode had seven people on stage two and they dragged it out for three hours. For starters, nobody failed stage two, so seven people were on stage three, and then two people made it to the final stage. Normally, Ninja Warrior Germany does about 30 to 40 runs in three hours, and this was 16 runs in three hours. This led to a lot of dragged out profile pieces, very long post-run interviews, and it was just very, very boring to watch, especially in the finale. And I guess that's the give and take. Stage one was good. It was exactly what a renewal should be. It was essentially Sasuke 18. But then you get to the later stages and you really see how that affects a show that does three hour episodes. And it just was brutal. I would rather take this season of Ninja Warrior Germany over Sasuke because Ninja Warrior Germany, I enjoyed every episode except for the finale. However, in Sasuke, I enjoyed stage one and not so much the rest. So percentage wise, I guess I'm gonna give it to Germany. I would absolutely recommend watching this season of Ninja Warrior Germany. However, I would say if anything, when you get to the finale, fast forward to the runs and nothing else. I can already hear you guys screaming at what my number one is because the number one ninja show to me of 2022 was American Ninja Warrior season 14. For all of its flaws that I have mentioned in all of my reviews, I still enjoyed this season more than I've enjoyed a lot of past seasons of a and I thought that the qualifiers were passable. They weren't amazing, but they were good. They got the job done and they were definitely better than... 13s and 12s and parts of 11s and definitely 10s and 9s. The semifinals, I that felt like a fever dream, man. You had a whole episode that was like your feel-good episode. You had an episode that was just all shocks. And honestly, it was edited relatively well. I get that it's a stacked lineup in every single episode. They definitely shafted some people in terms of editing. But at the same time, oh man, that was a roller coaster. And I guess it's just... That's what A&W has that Sasuke does not. A&W in multiple episodes has the opportunity to deliver us multiple different pros and cons of Ninja Warrior. And when you get multiple types of pros, the feel goods, the shocks, the, uh, the new obstacles, the renewals, blah, 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 you're probably gonna be more entertained with that as long as you're overlooking some of the flaws. Vegas had some pretty spotty editing. I'm not even gonna lie, but at the same time, um, Upon rewatch, it was a little better than when I first watched it. Results-wise, I didn't mind this season of A&W, and I actually quite enjoyed that. Like I said, this is my list, and uh, I'm standing by it, because when it comes to the results and how it was handled, I feel like A&W slightly, slightly edges out Germany and Sasuke, ever so slightly.
That is my full ranking of every Ninja Warrior show of 2022. Be sure to comment below your favorite and your least favorite season from this year. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a happy new year and I will see you guys in 2023 after I take a, a short little break. I'm going to take a short break from YouTube. I just needed... <sighs> I did like 85 videos this year in like eight months and so I need to, I need to rest. But we will be back with more great content, and of course, we'll be reviewing all of these shows and ranking them at the end of 2023. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.